you very much, GCFF, for, for hosting us today. It sounds like a fantastic event. Uh, I caught quite a bit of uh, Dusan's very interesting presentation. And look, we're going to talk about some similar themes in that is the attractiveness of mining in especially Brazil, uh, but in the broader continent, uh, we feel is a very important jurisdiction for, you know, extractive industries uh, like mining. And in our case, uh, the mining of hard rock lithium. Uh, so look, as a, as a little bit of context on our company. So the name is Latin Resources. And that really signifies the importance of Latin America to our strategy up to this point in time. And uh, as context, you know, we have other projects in Peru and, and Argentina and in Australia. But the main focus of our company for the past four years has been our hard rock or spodumene project in Brazil called Salinas. So that will be the focus of the presentation today. And I'm happy to take questions at the end. So I'll talk about Brazil, but I know that it was a heavy feature of the previous presenter, but I think it is really worth highlighting how attractive this is for mining and, ext and extractive industries. So uh, where our project is based, which is Salinas, is of particular note. And, you know, the things that are very important in terms of, I guess, understanding how attractive this jurisdiction is for mining is that there are 300 operating mines in the state of Minas Gerais. So you've got Vale, you've got Rio Tinto, you've got BHP. Uh, basically, all the big mining houses in the world have a presence in this region because one, it is very rich uh, geologically, um, but it also is a fantastic place to do mining business. And, you know, that's a product of infrastructure. So we have great access from a road and, and port perspective, uh, but a very big one for our industry, which is hard rock lithium and being a sustainable producer is the availability of uh, a hydro-backed grid. So essentially green energy and at a very uh, economical cost. So paying about three to five cents per kilowatt hour, which, you know, by global standards is, is incredibly uh, uh, cheap. So it very much goes to the fact that we can be a sustainable, but also very low cost producer of hard rock lithium in the future. Another slide just on Brazil, again, I think this is probably the most important part of, of, you know, or I guess the competitive advantage that we have in this market is the jurisdiction that we're in. And, you know, this slide here, uh, you know, being the CFO of the company is very important in that the corporate tax rate that will be applicable to our project once it's in operation will be 15.25%. And, you know, compared to Australia and Canada, that is, you know, at, at a very steep discount, but very attractive because it means that we can be sustainable uh, through, you know, uh, the the volatility in the sector, which, you know, in battery materials, critical materials and, and, and lithium is ever present. But, uh, you know, having a favourable tax regime can very much support us uh, with our ambitions. Uh, the royalty is very much the same, so much lower that, than, uh, than peer jurisdictions in Australia and Canada. And then the final two here, uh, look, I've spoken about electricity, the last one. So very uh, cost competitive, again, against Australia and Canada. Uh, but wages are a very interesting one. So, look, I'm based in Perth in Western Australia, and it's fair to say that the mining industry here uh, is, is, you know, a big part of our economy. But it has also led to a lot of escalation and inflation in terms of how much we need to pay workers to, you know, work on mine sites, whereas... You know, in Brazil, it's a, a very large population. It's uh, a, an economy which is industrializing. And, you know, as I guess a, a characteristic of the economy is access to very affordable labor. So, again, what that means to us in combination with the tax, the royalties and the electricity, it means that we can be very cost competitive and produce our products at a low cash cost compared to our peers. Uh, the final slide I'll, I'll just mention on Brazil is that we, we have an MOU, which is around collaboration to develop our project. And we've received fantastic support from, from local, provincial and, and federal, uh, I guess, uh, you know, uh, politicians in progressing our project. And, you know, compared to other jurisdictions in the world where it's very hard to get a project from, uh, I guess, you know, discovery and exploration to development, Brazil is, is, is very much different in, in this sense in that they're very much uh, supporting development of projects which are positive for their economy and I guess their, their role that they want to play in critical materials. And 
Look, one thing I want to say here as well is about China's involvement in in Brazil, in that, you know, we've seen announcements around BYD. So, you know, recently, recently committing 1.1 billion uh, to build a very large EV car manufacturing facility. Uh, we've also seen uh, investment uh, through debt from the Chinese Development Bank into BNDS, which is the Brazilian De Development Bank. So, look, it is fair to say that the relationship between Brazil and China is very strong, and we see that continuing into the future. Okay, so now we'll talk a little bit about our project, the Salinas uh, Lithium Project, which again is hard rock uh, lithium or spodumene in, in our case. And what I want to highlight here, you know, there's a lot of information we can cover, but I think the most important thing is that we have very large scale. So the resource currently sits at 78 million tonnes at 1.24% lithium. And that already makes us one of the largest and highest grade undeveloped lithium projects in the world. But, you know, we have ambitions and we have a drilling program underway, which we are confident will see that resource grow to over 100 million tonnes. And again, that just makes us uh, one of the most important future sources of lithium supply uh, for the global market. So the resource is, is, is very large and we, we've confirmed that, but we again do have ambitions to grow uh, even more. But you know, the, the next thing that is very important to establish is, you know, can the material be recovered, uh, I guess, sustainably and economically? And in the in the in our case, with our geology, we're very fortunate in that the material is very coarse grain and very amenable to what we call a DMS or dense media separation as a processing stream. So what this means effectively is that we can achieve a very high recovery. So we forecast a global recovery for our, our SC5.5 product, which will be our main product, of about 68%. And we can do that with DMS only, and that avoids flotation. So, you know, as example, as examples, in that most of the, the operations in Australia or Western Australia uh, depend on flotation to make sure their recoveries are at that level. Uh, for us, we can achieve that without flotation, which saves us capital, it saves us time, it saves us water, and ultimately is a much simpler and streamlined operation. So uh, very fortunate in that we have a simple yet highly effective uh, flow sheet, which will produce a very high quality concentrate for our customers. Okay, so this is a, a similar slide, which shows that we, again, are very fortunate in the, the geology uh, that our Salinas project has. So uh, we're mining spodumene, which is, uh, you know, hard rock lithium. Uh, but the very fortunate thing for us is that there's no lipid light and there's no pet light. So it's a very pure uh, geology to commence with. And, and what that ultimately means is that uh, there's less deleterious elements. It's easier to refine the product to a, a lithium uh, mineral, which is what we'll produce. So uh, again, we have a very, uh, very attractive project from a geological perspective. I mentioned the high grade. So very high against global uh, benchmarks, which again helps you produce your product, um, you know, very sustainably from an economic perspective. But it also makes your project uh, a lot more. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to manage the volatility that we do see in in the economy at the moment, especially in lithium. If you've been watching spot prices, but at a grade of one point three percent, we're well above uh, the average producer in the market which again, very much helps us. Uh, I spoke about our material being very coarse grain. So feedback from engineering partners and potential customers is very strong. And again, that helps us produce a very high quality product. And, and as well with impurities, we have very low iron oxide, very low mica. So a very, very pure product. So I'm um, very fortunate in that regard. Um, from a mining perspective, look, very traditional and simple approach to what we'll do, which is, uh, conventional drill and, drill and blast uh, hauling routes have been optimized and they're very short compared to other operations uh, and our waste will be dry stack tailing so all in all a very sustainable and simple flow sheet to produce our product for our customers which again helps us get to market very fast uh, helps us to do it economically and also very sustainably uh, this is a little bit more detail on our dms processing uh, Look, we have a, a peer operation in Brazil that you may be familiar with, which is Sigma Lithium. 
Uh, they produce a very high quality and in-demand concentrate uh, from, from their operation, and they use a DMS flow sheet as well. So we have a very valuable benchmark that we can compare against, and uh, it will be very, uh, yeah, our, our studies with uh, SGS Lakefield in, in Canada, which are one of the, the key engineering partners in our sector, have done very good piloting work to show that this will be a, a very uh, a, a flow sheet which is very amenable to the geology that, that we have for our projects. So uh, very attractive in that sense. Okay, so as I mentioned, look, I'm the CFO of Latin Resources. So very much interested in, in business case and, and making sure that we can deliver as much value for our shareholders and stakeholders as possible. And so this was a PEA that we released in September last year. And look, you can see the numbers are very attractive from a net present value and internal rate of return perspective. So 3.6 billion uh, net present value, that's in Australian dollars and a 132% internal rate of return, which uh, one thing to mention is that price is the biggest assumption which drives your valuations. And, and we assumed an average price of one six nine nine or sixteen uh, sixteen hundred and ninety nine dollars USD for our product of SC five and a half. And look, it's fair to say that price expectations have reduced since then. So they currently sit at about thirteen hundred or fourteen hundred dollars a ton for an SC five and a half product longer term. Uh, but look, our our business case remains very strong even at those price levels. And, and to be honest, even at, at prices below $1,000 a ton. So a very resilient business case. Uh, two key things I probably want to highlight in addition to the business case is that one, the all in sustaining cost. So, you know, to, to have an all in sustaining cost at $536 a ton, you know, is, is uh, much better than what we see in Western Australia and also very competitive and in many instances lower than what Africa is producing at giving the, the long uh, shipping routes to, to China, the ultimate customer. And what gives us confidence that this number is, is a very robust number is that Sigma Lithium is producing at this level. And, uh, you know, again, we, we think we can produce at a similar level to Sigma or perhaps even better, given that, you know, we've had more time to optimise our, our flow sheet design. But again, you know, Brazil is a fantastic place to do mining business and very cost competitive in that regard. Uh, the final thing on this slide I'd like to mention is that the CapEx of 253 million US to commence is very low in a capital uh, from a capital intensity perspective. And again, sets us apart from a lot of other, what you would say, um, you know, more expensive projects to, to commence. And my specific reference there is to Western Australia where it is, uh, you know, a high, you know, cost environment compared to Brazil. But again, doing a lot of fabrication and manufacturing in Brazil has made us deliver a very competitive number within our PEA that we released in last year. Look, I've spoken about the capital, um, very competitive uh, from a global capital intensity perspective. This will be updated in our DFS, but the numbers are looking very similar. And I spoke about our, our uh, all in sustaining cost and our cash costs, which are represented in the table here to the right. Uh, it's worth stating that, you know, of your cash cost, or at least in Brazil, about 70% is your mining. And, and with mining in Brazil, uh, they have a very mature mining industry. Uh, so availability of equipment and experienced employees is very high. Uh, and again, the cost of labor helps here. And I guess those factors having the experience and low cost labor means that that very important element of your cash cost, which is mining, uh, can be very can, can be lower in Brazil than other jurisdictions, which again helps us be a very sustainable and, and high value producer. Uh, look, one thing we want to state is the capacity that we're targeting. So uh, our initial target will be 525,000 tons per annum of SC5.5. So you know, that will already be a, a top 10 producer by, by current global standards. But given the size of our resource and the attractiveness of Brazil as a mining jurisdiction and, and I guess the local community's, uh, I guess, willingness to, to really want to see this grow and, and produce more for the region, we have potential to take our production a lot further, you know, potentially north of, of a million tonnes per annum. Uh, but that will be confirmed in, in studies uh, to be released at a, at a future date. So here's our schedule and look, 2024 has been a very busy year. Uh, we've released one uh, resource upgrade. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, test work, uh, which some results have been released to the market. 
Uh, one thing to mention is that we have recently announced a, a, a partnership, is probably the best way to describe it, uh, with Pilgrim Minerals, who uh, are one of the, the largest independent lithium producers in the world. Uh, look, this transaction is subject to a shareholder vote later this year, but you know this this partnership with Pilbara uh, provides us a lot of uh, a lot of key factors which will help us successfully develop our project. So, uh, you know, Pilbara has established offtake and customer relationships in Asia. They have access to a very strong balance sheet and credit facilities. So. This partnership with Pilbara Minerals will really bring out the best for our Salinas project. So, you know, we're, we're very excited about what this partnership will bring, again, subject to a shareholder vote, but uh, the exposure that our shareholders in the future uh, will have in terms of being exposed to both Pilbara and Latin resources, uh, should the vote be approved, I feel is a very attractive mix in that you have an operation in Australia, which has been very successful, uh, but exposure to this very low cost and emerging region in Brazil, I think is is going to make one of the more attractive lithium companies in the world. So, you know, we're very excited to see that transaction uh, uh, complete and hopefully later this year. And then in terms of our own, our own project milestones, it's about FID later this year and ultimately targeting production in mid 2026. Uh, look, this is our board of directors, uh, you know, very experienced in terms of, you know, corporate and, and mining. And I won't go through them one by one because I think we're running a little bit behind time, um, but a very, you know, supportive and knowledgeable group of people that have done amazing work to progress our project to the place where it is at and also supporting us with our proposed partnership with Pilgrim Minerals. Uh, from a share market perspective, look, it's been it's been very challenging trading conditions for you know lithium development companies, uh, but fortunately we've been very resilient. And again, that comes down to the quality of our project, uh, the loyalty of our shareholders, and really the potential that we and, and Brazil have in terms of being a supplier of critical materials. So, uh, you know, we're very grateful for the loyalty of our shareholders, and we think there is uh, a lot of exciting, uh, I guess, you know, value to be delivered into the future. So. Uh, we always want to thank our shareholders. Uh, so just to summarise quickly uh, before we see if there are any questions in that our Salinas project, which is our, our main, um, I guess, focus within our company, is that it is very low cost. Uh, the flow sheet is conventional, but also highly efficient in terms of producing a very high quality spodumene concentrate, uh, very sustainable in that we'll, uh, we'll adopt dry stack tailings, which uh, has been proven through Sigma Lithium to be a very efficient way of managing your tailings um, disposal. Uh, we have access to this very uh, green and, and low cost energy with a hydro backed grid in Minas Gerais, which we're very fortunate to have access to. Uh, we're currently recycling water and we'll do so in operation. So again, really trying to be a sustainable producer because you know producing lithium is not the goal for us. Uh, producing sustainable and very economical lithium is what we want to deliver for our shareholders. And that's what uh, we will deliver. Uh, we're very confident uh, about. And the final point here is low capex. And in the current market, I think that's never been as important in that having a low capital intensity to start your operation um, can really set projects apart. And, you know, for our project is a great advantage. So something that, you know, we, we very much focus on in our conversations with uh, you know, the market, our, our potential future partner in Pilgrim Minerals and, you know, debt partners and the like. So overall, a, a very attractive project um, that, you know, we're very excited about. Thank you, Mitch. Uh, yeah, we've, um, we're running out of time, but we can have time to answer a couple of questions here uh, from the audience here live. He's, uh, he's asking you uh, from John, is uh, is your plan to produce mean at the mine site and leave the further processing to the lithium company to downstream focus corporations? Yes, so, so correct, Gilbert. Um, so a very traditional flow sheet in that regard. And look, there's no getting away from the fact that all of the, the expertise and capacity for downstream refining is in China. So uh, that is ultimately where our product will go, at least in, in the first five to 10 years of production. Um, but you never know beyond that, there may be ambitions in Brazil to, to grow out a, a downstream sector, but the current central case is that the product will be destined for, for Asia. And uh, one question also is that the experience in this state, Minas Gerais in Brazil, is the lack of water in the summer. Are you confident that you will have enough water all year round? Very confident that we'll have access to sufficient water. So, 
you know, conveniently we're located about 18 kilometers away from a very large dam with a surplus water uh, to the community and neighboring industries requirements. So absolutely no shortage in terms of water for our project, which is a great advantage. And one final question we collected in the past few days is, is talk about the 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 Bilmero transaction here, Bilmero, uh, uh, Bilmero Minerals. So why would you think it's the best value for the current shareholders for that? Yeah, look, so again, it is subject to a shareholder vote. So we're progressing the company on the basis that, you know, we are still standalone, but, you know, we've, we've been in the market, uh, you know, personally as a company for a very long time. And, at the moment, it is difficult to secure, you know, attractive funding uh, to help you develop your project on a timely, in a, in a timely basis. And I guess following a process that we've conducted over the past 12 months, uh, a partnership with Pilbara was the most attractive. Uh, one, given their experience in the lithium sector. Um, so they've been, you know, accelerating their, their Pilgangura operation. They've done fantastically in terms of ramping that up and getting it to a low cost position. I guess as a result of that, they've got a very strong balance sheet. So currently 1.6 billion Aussie dollars uh, in, in, in cash and a, and a revolving credit facility of about a billion dollars, which again, really gives them the capacity to develop projects like ours. And I think, you know, third, it's, it's, it's probably two things. Um, so it's the culture and reputation in that there's close alignment. We feel that they will do an excellent job with our project and by uh, local stakeholders. So. We feel it is the best outcome for seeing our project um, reach timely production. And that's why we're very excited about the transaction. Thank you, Mitch, for your time here to share the latest update with us. Thank you, Gilbert.